What's up, guys? I'm Salty Mike, and this is your Star Citizen Week in Review for May 8th, 2023. This is the single biggest week in Star Citizen news since I started this show. 319 drops to the PTU with huge changes to mining and salvage. The roadmap update is sharing 320 updates already, and hide your wallets. Invictus is coming. All that and more on today's Week in Review. And as always, if this is your first week in review, this is where I take all of the official Star Citizen news each week, put it into one video, and share some of my opinions about it. I also live stream on Twitch, twitch.tv slash salty mic every day but Monday, so I can get this video out to you guys starting at 6.30 a.m. Eastern time. So stop by and say hello if you guys want to. A lot of you have been doing it lately, and I appreciate it. Now, we have so much to get to, so let's figure out what's going on with Star Citizen 319 PTU notes. And we start out on Monday with 319 hitting wave one on the PTU, and it starts out with some salvage contracts. There are three types, a lawful one, which will range from 1,000 to 50,000 credits of upfront cost, which gives you a salvageable ship or ships. You will be shot at by the station for trespassing at someone else's claim, but I think these are better served at more random locations, that the players that would take these types of missions are more solo or PVE type players that don't want to be messed with. You can hull strip for RMC, obviously, at these. You can strip down weapons and components now. And they have cargo on some of these ships, sometimes with absolutely insane value. There are lawless missions as well, which I've seen at 150,000 credit buy-in, which has five plus ships of varying size spawn at these. I earned millions of credits, and you will certainly find others here to fight against. Absolutely insane loot at these if you get lucky. We found a single box worth 220,000 credits. These are very far away from civilization. I would like to see something similar for the lawless ones here. Uh, really fun absolutely requires a group to take part in, not just for salvage, but there's so many loot boxes at some of these and components, it's nuts. And then there's unlawful missions. Uh, they're very similar to the lawful ones. 10,000 credit buy-in is the only kind that I've seen so far. Let me know in the comments down below if you've seen anything different uh, and had a different experience than me. You are on a 30-minute timer to salvage and get whatever you can before a number of ships come in waves to attack you. Uh, at least at Hurston, these are basically in the same location that you would find for bounties. That's where I found mine. Uh, so you are much less likely to be pirated at these locations as well. You're just more dealing with the PVE situation. There are much, much more uh, that will be coming from me on these missions in the PTU and beyond. So get subscribed uh, to the channel on more updates on these. Okay, and then we had the Ghost Hollow mission. And this is a little less exciting in my opinion as it seems like it can use a lot of balance. And there was a lot of balance as we go on throughout the week here, but it's still very much an active development. And I think it could use some more. Basically, you go to a reclaimer wreck and you take over two terminals that basically prints money and you have to withdraw it to your bank account so you can make that money. Uh, the value for your time and effort so far just doesn't really seem worth it yet. It's a lot to compete over. Yeah, it, it's, it's a lot of dying and a lot of uh, failure, I think, for what it might be worth. I don't know. It, it, it feels weird to me so far out of all the updates that are coming in 318. This is the one that I'm least excited about. And just in case you didn't know, an A2 bomb can drop on these while you're inside the wreck and you die. So I think that that's kind of, uh, not a good equalizer there. Uh, Lorville Skyline, obviously, uh, this is just a visual highlight for right now, but it looks quite amazing. So feel free to check those out. But my frames are in the 20s occasionally, and uh, it's improving slowly, but not great yet. And then Tractor Beam 0.5, uh, this is where basically you could take the... Uh, weapons and smaller components off of some of these ships, sell them, use them on your own. Very cool experience. You'll just press B on your tractor beam to get into like detach mode. And we also use this in the mining update to be able to uh, swap your lasers out. Density manager on ships. Basically, they're taking down PES a little bit because it's too much for the servers and too much for our clients. And then, uh, yeah, the last thing here really is Corsair, Cutter, C8R are all available in-game for in-game purchase. Corsair is 3.4 million. C8R is 900,000. At this point, I don't know how much the Cutter is, so leave a comment down below and let me know what you guys uh, found for that. But a key ship is missing here. 
the Drake Vulture. And I think this is a little bit messed up. Uh, we have had this in game for a significant period of time. We had communication from the CIG community team letting us know how they do things. And I'm not seeing the Vulture in the shops. And that is a problem. And I think that they want to sell it at Invictus launch week. And guys, you're making a video game that is playable now. Let us play it. I mean, come on. This is just getting ridiculous at this point, and it's embarrassing. Uh, mining and new player experience stuff for the initial patch did not make it in. So this was not in the PTU at this point on Monday. Tuesday patch comes in. Still no mining and new player experience. For updates, uh, they're still updating some building block stuff. They also gave a proper keybind for the port unlock feature, so you're able to take things on and off ships, which is right alt K. And the hint system is entirely changed over to the new system which is going to eventually enable the new player experience. We see that on Wednesday. Uh, they leave the details out of it really here uh, in the patch notes, but I went through it on my stream this week and it's pretty rough. Uh, basically, it, for me, the issue is completely unreadable UI. This hollow UI thing is just showing it's, it's terrible and I don't know why they keep going with it. It's completely unreadable in so many situations and they just keep insisting on doing it this way, and I don't know why. Now for the mining changes. This is the biggest shakeup in Star Citizen history, I think. It is taking the first gameplay loop and adding the depth to it that appears to be nearly 1.0, uh, right? Like, this is basically where my mining would likely be and feel in a lot of ways at a released version, in my opinion. So pretty crazy here. Uh, for ship mining, they basically changed resource distribution around the system, uh, where first, the most rocks you find are in fields, I would say. There's not many solos. There's a lot more groups now. And there's standard resources or commons, and they're going to be in every rock that you find. And they're going to be slightly different depending on the planet or uh, system area that you are in and we'll always have one of those in the rock and then they'll be com uh, uncommon or rare also as a part of these rocks trading availability has completely changed as well where some things will sell for more in other locations the further they are away from being a very common resource so for example uh, let's say hurston you get copper a lot of copper then that will sell in a distance farther away for much better than they would in the Hurston system, right? Then mining heads. This is another big one. The modules, the gadget, I mean, everything changed here. Uh, there's going to be a ton of detail. We're still trying to figure out how a lot of this stuff works. And basically they changed everything to kind of coincide with some of the changes that they're making to the rocks to make a certain mining head fit for a certain material that you're trying to mine. Uh, this makes solo mining much more interesting. This makes group mining even more interesting. Uh, for for FPS mining, they added Janelite, which is a new, incredibly rare FPS mineable that's only in the sand caves around the system. I happen to find it today, which is really exciting. And then again, the TDDs are set up to make sure you want to travel further for more, better prices, right? And refineries are doing the same thing. The further you are away from a certain material being common, the more likely you are to get a bonus at that refinery. And then we've been seeing at a lot of clips that the mining UI is updated for the better, I would say, but could use some work again with that readability aspect. And then for bug fixes, they fixed uh, the inability to mine bug, which we've basically had the entire update up until this point. And then they fixed issues with Ghost Hollow as well. For Thursday, they did minor economy polish to mining. I'm not really aware what this was because I was more focused on the mining aspects than the selling. Uh, salvage update is now you can easily get the unlawful contracts. Up to this point, I was really struggling to get them. And then the big change, you can now use a tractor beam and hangers to manage, for now, mining lasers and modules, uh, and then maybe guns and components as well. But this was a big problem uh, setting up for a lot of the video that you're seeing on screen so far, I think I was setting up for four to five hours and getting one to two hours of mining out of it. Bug fixes here, not much to point out. Maybe the Reclaimer rear hatch is finally working. I'm not even sure if that's fixed yet, though. And then Friday, that was the last patch this week. Uh, we had a patch every day this week, if you haven't noticed. The big thing here is a uh, better Loreville restricted area, but 
let me tell you, it's still not great. For mining, they've made Quantanium more available. It was nearly impossible to find up to this point. And then they raised the amount you get at the Ghost Hollow Reclaimer mission. But in my opinion, it's still not really worth doing for me yet uh, in comparison to mining. But I just prefer mining, so maybe that's me. And then for bug fixes, the big thing that they share here is an exploit with Salvage is now fixed where you can sell. You were able to sell the same gun over and over and over again indefinitely. And then Jumptown 2.1 on the live servers. Uh, started May 5th, is going until the ninth big change here is the interior and the exterior of the jump town locations there's now two terminals inside and a much larger exterior outside to, for defense there are two entrances it's harder to hold now all good changes but 318 is riddled with desync invisible players so i'm not really keen on playing this let me know down in the comments if you guys have been but i'm just focused on the 319 mining changes that was the patches this week. We're only at the patches. We have a roadmap roundup. We have a monthly report coming. Let's jump into the roadmap now. <laughs> so this was a bit of a surprise with 319 just hitting wave one. Bang, they come out with 320 updates. So we're starting out with progress tracker updates and ship trespass, which is basically a stand your, gra stand your ground law. Uh, if you're familiar with that, if somebody comes into your ship, you're able to defend yourself and not get a penalty for it, where currently we are. And then a new mission called retrieve consignment. It's another version of a fetch quest, but it kind of looks like from the images here that it is security post Korea box uh, delivery kind of thing, but you have to get multiple boxes, which is kind of cool. Uh, for 319 cards, the RSI links is now committed. And then 320 cards back to the ship trespass and the retrieve consignment, but also a little sneaky one, the whole C, which is a long awaited ship is now on the cards for 320. Very big deal here. Short roadmap roundup, but very interesting one. Now let's jump into the monthly report. All right, for that, I condensed it as much as I could, but there is still a lot of really relevant info here. So we're going to start out with AI tech, and there's a lot of AI work, which mostly seems like Squadron 42 stuff, but this one I found to be interesting. They are working on NPCs driving around ground vehicles and avoiding each other, which I think is kind of cool. Then for ship art, obviously, there's a lot of discussion around Invictus ships, which have, which have not been named yet. Uh, Lynx Rover obviously is wrapped up, as we saw in Roadmap. Uh, the Argo SRV is also nearly done, and they're also adding... Uh, uh, tractor beams to other ships, probably things like the 315P, the Caterpillar, stuff like that. MISC Freelancer is component pass is still going. And then the gray box for the Santokiai as well. So I think we have to wait for Invictus and we'll see a lot more on ships probably in the next couple weeks. And then Arena Commander features, a lot of backend stuff is still going on there, but they also made the fourth AC track while trying to make a new Defer link. Uh, basically, they made two versions of the track. They like them both. So they're making a new one. We don't have it named yet. Uh, character and weapon features. This is a pretty big one to be in the PU monthly because I think I think they're integrating EVA from Squadron 42 that we saw at the CitizenCon presentation into the game now. Uh, this is really, aside from a minor thing with the actor team on the salvage uh, beam on your uh, multi-tool. Basically, this is the first major feature coming over from Squadron 42 into Star Citizen. So we'll see how much polish is really in Squadron 42 right now. They also have zero G traversal, a bunch of things. Flak ammo is also being worked on with the uh, option for proximity triggers to have it explode. Uh, gameplay features. Munching is actually in development right now with the first prototype. So that's a big deal. And the UI for what seems to be ship-based refining is being worked on, even though it wasn't called out. There are a number of features already mentioned in this section as well, and they mentioned a ship claim timer and price changes that people are all upset about. Leave a comment down below about what you guys think about the ship claim timers. For me personally, I don't like them. The game is definitely still too buggy for it, but at some point we have to rip the band-aid off and make this a game. When you die, you get punished, and that's it. It might be your fault. It might not be your fault, but we got to get used to it at some point, I guess. Uh, but I would like to see the game a little bit more polished with PES issues being resolved before we brought this in. Uh, mission features. 
There is a ton here. This team has been rolling. They're adding all ships to the pool that you can see in like bounty missions now, which we've really could call out what ships were always going to be in certain types of missions. We won't be able to do that anymore. Uh, salvage section was sneaky. They mentioned a new type of mission in the works, which is repairing and restoring a salvageable ship. That's kind of a big deal. Uh, more mentions of new mission types with ship interiors uh, being marked up for combat. So things like the 890 jump and the Caterpillar missions that we've seen in the past. Narrative, big takes, takeaways here, is air traffic control dialogue to support cargo features. I assume we'll be dropping off cargo at cargo decks with this. That's what it sounds like. And they're focusing on pyro missions, so it must be close, right? Right, guys? <laughs> Systemic services and tools. Things that caught my attention here are their prototyping mission markers for bound hunting v2 possibly now that was a lot now we get into video updates where we get the best information from this week Now, with those video updates, we start out with Inside Star Citizen, which was one of those episodes, right, where they showed a buggy racetrack. So Star Citizen Live was pretty cool, right? And it was called <laughs> Mining, Salvage, and Tractor Beams, Oh My. And the early part shows, it was basically a lot of what we discussed that was being brought into 319. But then Torsten gets asked a question about some of the future plans around everything, and he sort of tells us the whole vision here. Uh, like this uh, distribution of the resources helps us drastically to already plan out all the next steps that will, as Dan so nicely always con mentions, it's like we, we really want to close out the loop, right? So you start mining, you pick up the resources, may it be mining, may it be salvage, then you bring it to your refinery, you refine it to the processed goods, and once you have it in the processed goods, you bring it to uh, your crafting facility, crafting ship, crafting whatever, and then you create uh, the yeah, requested items out of them, and then you can even like circle back to like recycling the the goods that you created and bring them back into the into the loop. What I like most about this is that they seem to have more of a final version understood and sharing that vision with us here. And then, you know, that's something they never really did outside of Chris Roberts, just kind of pie in the sky stuff. And yeah, this really looks like they're working towards it. And that's what made the mining update so much more in depth and so much more clear visioned on what they wanted to do. They also shared a lot about crafting here. And then Dan adds a lot more context to this as well. Eventually it all leads to crafting and making your own items out of nothing. You start out of nothing with a ship and you get this. But it's there's very few there's a few few very interesting things along the way. One of the closest things right now are gonna be those mining sacks. We need to be able to eject, collect, put into a refinery, process all that or turn into to refined materials, take that to a refining uh, a manufacturing uh, ship or sell it or whatever you want to do so this the the main thing is like we're we're seeing this as a mining operation we're seeing this as mining refining hauling production crafting right. manufacturing operation that you can run you can run it with two three people and or you can run it on a full scale where you have whatever 20 prospectors five refinery ships three haulers escort for all of them uh, it's all that thing. Once that ecosystem starts starts going, you're going to see some amazing operations in Star Citizen. Man, I want this to mean something, right? Like, this is all super awesome to hear, but until we're doing this crafting for a reason, it's not really going to matter that much. And I also want to point out, they completely leave out what items we would be crafting. It could be super small stuff all the way up to ships. We have or stations, you know, like it can go as far as your imagination can take it at the moment because they haven't shared details on that yet, uh, which is, you know, kind of disappointing, but also probably a good idea. And then the next question was asked around salvage and what's next. And he kind of talked about munching here. Like every reclaimer owner will be happy to actually be able to use their their claw at some point on, on any debris ship. And... Uh, yeah, but not only is it important for, for those ship owners, but it's also important now with PES. So I think that is I think that is even more important than, than any any gameplay right now. We need we need cleanup. And there's no better way to do cleanup than uh, to gamify it and then like have it rewarding in, in the sense of yeah, you, you destroy the ships, 
it's fun to destroy those ships or to those debris pieces and mm. then you convert them into resources and then you are e either able to sell those for for like just profit or you use the resources you gather for for crafting them coming in the very far future all right three things shared here that's very important the claw is going to be used which is kind of a big deal and it sounds like it's going to be used in the first iteration of munching uh, rmc is not going to be the only thing that we're salvaging uh, and that's actually confirmed much more uh in later in the video and that crafting has been confirmed to be in the very far future so they set that expectation right here right now uh they're gonna talk about it but it's in the very very far future uh, another thing that was really sneaky here was their break period during the show was the actual sneak peek this week in my opinion which is the newer derelict outposts which are apparently villages it's uh getting pretty wild now uh, as far as these derelicts so good job montreal and then the next question we got was for miners and this one's really important i'm on the flexibility of being able to take one laser off and put another one on and have a bunch of modules in your ship being uh, more of a easy flow so we cannot fix it for all the items right now but uh, so we already have at least yeah, so today we got it internally working that you can uh, move the at least the sub items for for the mining ads more comfortably out of your station inventory onto the ground pick them up carry them <laughs> and bring them over to to your ship but there are some some issues that we still have to solve so, and uh, yeah, once we get that sorted, uh, we will probably push it out. But for the, the other items, especially for the bigger ones, it's more complicated because yeah, there, there is no way right now, even with the, the tractor beam deactivated in the green zones, uh, to prevent players from messing up your, your spaces. Yeah, so this is really big. We have very few mining heads, so the fact that they're not doing much in terms of uh, the customizability with them is okay to me. It's the modules that's the big deal. Uh, you can go from anywhere between 10 to 100 of these that you're bringing out in a mining group, depending on how many people you have and how many lasers you have, right? So this is uh, essential to have done before 319 Live, and I'm really fingers crossed that they have it. And then they give a little bit more insight in for the cargo elevators and how that's going to work and how we're going to utilize them uh, in comparison to what we have today with inventories. The cargo elevator, the hangar cargo elevator is going gonna, is gonna to offer this functionality. You'll be able to pull any item that you have in that station into that hangar through the cargo elevator, then put it wherever you want on your ship, equip it. And it also works the other way around where you pull from your ship, put it on the cargo elevator, goes into the station. And one other thing you'll be able to pull with that is uh, pull vehicles. So you'll be able to say, well, I want the ballista on my ship. And you pull it with a cargo elevator, comes on that cargo elevator, you drive it up into your ship and take off. We'll move, move towards physicalizing as many aspects of the game as possible, basically. Yeah, no more, no more magical teleporting of inventory. Personally, for the super large items like huge components, uh, weapons, maybe bigger things like that. I totally understand cargo elevators exclusively. Uh, going back to the last question with little modules and things like that, I don't want to have to use cargo elevators. And that's where they're like really knocking on this magical inventory. Listen, man, we all play video games. I think it's totally fine to have this inventory menu pull from it and just see th something end up in your hands. Uh, that's me. Let me know what you guys think. I know a lot of you bought into Star Citizen for the sim aspects. I personally did not. I'm okay with that. A lot of people aren't. So, uh, and certainly the people at CIG aren't. So that's uh, that's gonna be a big thing. But I think that they're overcomplicating things in a lot of extents here where, uh, yeah, it's not that big of a deal to move your arm and your backpack and just see something go in there. That's me though. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think. And then uh, that was a big part of the week, but we do have a lot more even in other updates. And as always, we start out with a sneak peek. This wasn't as much of a sneak peek. It was on their YouTube channel, as well as the email where we usually see the sneak peek. It's just the video for Invictus. It's the trailer for that. So if you haven't seen that yet, it will be linked down in the description. And for Invictus, uh, there's not a ton to say here. It starts on May 19th uh, and goes until the 30th. The real kind of thing to point out right now is this M-I-R-A-I- 
company, uh, Mirai, uh, that is definitely looks like some sort of a branch of Misk. And uh, yeah, we'll see what that is in the coming days, I think. And then lastly, we finally made it to the end. The subscriber promo for May is a pretty cool one. It's some light backpacks and they mostly, uh, I mostly go for the Morozov, so I don't really use these, but these are pretty cool looking. The night camo skin is for the $10 subs. The green geometric pattern is for the $20 subs. And the digital camo can be purchased on the subscriber store by any subscriber. Uh, yeah, so pretty cool. And then the vehicle of the month here is the mole. So any of you subscribers out there that want to try out the new mining update, well, you got a mole for a month. So good luck with that. And guys, that will do it for this week. Thank you so much for getting here. If you got to the end of this video, please hit a like on it because it was a lot. I didn't know what what to keep. I didn't know what to leave out. I tried to put everything I thought that was important and hopefully you guys appreciated it uh, because it is quite a bit. This was the most time I've ever had to put into researching and putting together uh, this show. So again, thank you so much for watching. Like, subscribe, comment down below on anything I might have missed or anything that we discussed today and I will see you guys in the next one.